Hello and welcome to yet another video. Today I think we have an X470 Gaming Plus Max in here. I'm not too sure, so we're going to open this uh, this up together. And let's see if this is actually the board, and I don't think it is. I think it's a similar one. Let's see. Oh no, it is the one. It is an X470 Gaming Plus Max. Max. This is a beautiful board. Nice platform for an AM4. If you want to go high end AM4 boards, this is great. And I need to look up why this board is here. One moment. So, this board came to me because it was unstable. So, the owner said this would boot basically every time, but it would crash sometimes. Um, this could have various uh, faults. One of the faults could be a BIOS that is not supported for a processor. Another thing could be knocked off components. I had it on a different board that it run unstable because there was a big capacitor missing on the back side of the board. Um, that wasn't actually a filter but was used for something else. So. One thing would be to look out for any physical damage on this board to see if there's any capacitors, for example, missing. And another thing would be to flash the BIOS of this board just to be sure to have a newer BIOS. And the other component could be that actually the parts that he used on this board were incompatible with each other or just didn't run right. One of the big things that can always happen is related to memory. As soon as you, as you have conflicts with memory, you always get an unstable system. A big part of that is very high transfer speeds of memory. So if you have memory that has high transfer speeds and has low latency, it always comes with the risk of instability. It shouldn't, but it always could and you never know. Because using XMP is actually overclocking um, as, far as, the, as far as AMD and Intel are concerned. So XMP doesn't have to run and doesn't have to be stable on your board. But from my first glance that I had now, I couldn't see any components that were ripped off. And I think the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to try to boot this board up together. It probably, it should just boot up. You're going to use the 2200G. And then we're going to go into Windows and we're going to see if we can get that far if we already crash on the way there and how the sport behaves. So let me quickly build it up and then we will see each other again. So right now the board is built up. I do not know if this actually posts or not because I haven't tried it so far. It's just a guess on my side because the owner said that uh, he just couldn't get it to run stable. So I would think that this board does boot up. But I haven't checked anything. Let's turn on the power supply together. And that looks like almost 100 milliamps, which looks quite normal for standby power. And let's now get also a video capture on here. And let's turn this board on. There are post LEDs here. We have, let's see, uh, we're starting from the top with CPU, then DRAM, then VGA, and then boot. And let's turn this on and see what happens. Power consumption looks very good, 2.6. Yeah, it should be jumping a lot, which it does. Goes up to three. And our we cycle. Our post uh, LEDs are cycling from CPU and restarting. That's a good sign. Let's see, I just saw four amps. That is VGA. And I've actually nothing connected to VGA, which might be a problem. Let's connect our DVI onto here. And as we can see, we are in BIOS, or we have a splash screen at least. And now the configuration has changed. And what does it say? Press F1 to run setup. Let's do that. Let's go into setup. And I think I pressed the wrong button because we're already going into Windows. Okay, so the thing is, we had a, a different board before that was hanging uh, on going into Windows, but this thing does not seem to have that problem because we instantly go into Windows. Um, one more thing I want to do, 
uh, before we uh, run actual stress stress tests in Windows is I want to go into the BIOS and I want to see what BIOS version we are running S uh, for me to see if we're running an older BIOS or a newer BIOS and if this has ever been flashed or not because that would be one of the things I would um, suggest for someone that has instable uh, Windows behavior or in general um, instable behavior. So let's go into the BIOS together. And now we are on our actual BIOS uh, screen. And as we can see, we have probably the newest BIOS on here. This has a build date of the 12th of June, I think, 2023. So this BIOS is one of the newest that it could be. So I wouldn't think that that is actually a problem. We can still flash that, but I think this should be fine. And right now we are on Windows. Now to run actual stress tests, I want to switch not, uh, from the variable power supply that we're using here to my 12 volt server style power supply that we can use as much amps as we need. And then we're going to start to run some stress tests together and I will run you through what stress tests I use to see if a system is actually stable or not. And now we have our server power supply connected and not anymore our switching power supply. We're going into Windows and I'm going to introduce you to the software that I use to uh, run stress tests. And right now let's enlarge our Windows so you can uh, see that better. We have the software that is called Linpack Extreme 64. This is a benchmark or a stress test that, ha that has various combined loads that sometimes has low loads, sometimes has high loads and a variety of different things that tested in it that you cannot see, but it actually is pretty good to simulate the, um, the everyday use of a PC and doesn't just hit it 100% the all, all the time, but it varies the load. So what I always do is I go into stress tests and I select at least eight gigs because I have 20 gigs installed right now. I want to l use at least eight gigs of those uh, of the RAM. And I like to go with at least two passes of the software. But in this case where the problem with the main board was that it is unstable. I'm going to go for a few more passes. So let's say we're going to for six passes this time because this is the APU that I have installed. I will want to go for a few a fewer passes with this and want to see how it behaves. If those six pass, I will install the 2600X in here and install the GPU in here and then we'll make another few turns of Linpack just to be sure. But for now, I'm going to press enter and then we want to use all available threads. So I'm, I'm gonna hit Y, uh, disable sleep mode and CPU HW monitor in the background. Yes, we also want that. So Linpack is going to start now and in the background we have HW info running. Here you can see some of the temperatures, some of the voltage rates. I'm just going to look at some temperatures and going to let this run through. So be, we, I will be back as soon as something happens. Either it passes or we have a crash. So, and now Linpack has passed all these six times and almost every time the time was very uh, similar to the other ones, uh, we actually hit pretty high uh, temperature on this CPU also, like 96 degrees. So this actually came to throttling and was actually heavy in use. So I think that's a pretty good result for now. Let's now change over to um, the 3500X because that is the most power hungry CPU that I have for AIM4 right now. And we're going to connect the GPU up there, up to this, and we're going to see how that works then. And right now we have our 3500X installed in here with 20 gigs of RAM and I'm going to do the same procedure as I did before. I'm going to open up Linpack and this time we're going to uh, take some more passes. So, and I'm going to go for the 10 gig, gig version. So I'm going for 10 passes this time to see 
if it's actually stable. There's also a GPU installed in here now. Um, I'm going quickly going to show that to you. Oh, you can't see it because it's at the bottom. But the GPU is installed. That's a Vega 64, our usual test card. I can show you that in Device Manager. As we can see under Graphics Card, there's the RX Vega that we have that works just fine. And so let's let 10 passes of Linpack run. And let's see if anything changes in our behavior of the board. And I'm also going to be monitoring the temperatures. This time I applied a little bit of thermal paste to, to have a better um, cooling interface. And let's see if this will pass all 10 passes or not. See you then. And with that, we have 10 passes of Linpack actually running through without a problem of 10 gigabyte Linpack to be exact. And also this CPU also got to 96 degrees, which isn't a surprise to anyone because I'm just using the boxed cooler. And the 3500X is, seems to be a hot chip. So the next thing that I would want to do is to use a GPU in this, but I don't think actually that there's going to be any problem with that. Um, you could also run specific RAM tests on this to be sure that RAM is working, but with running through Linpack with uh, using high memory, I don't think that that will be a problem. But what I will do is I will first do a little bit of Furmark. Furmark often isn't um, very practical to use for stability because you also need to do some 3D uh, application like Heaven Benchmark or MSI Combust or anything like that. So I will do some Furmark, let that run a little bit and then I will show you Heaven later. So Furmark has been running since 8 minutes and no particular problems with that. And now I'm going to go over into Heaven's Benchmark, going to be running one benchmark of it so one th uh, run through all over the 26 scenes to test its stability and as you can see we also have a pass of heaven so i got to be honest there's nothing else for me left to check on this main board which is kind of a bummer to be honest because there has to had to be some kind of instability for the previous person who was using this main board and this is a kind of indecisive um, conclusion to the video because for me right now I have done tests I have done basically all I could think of where I would think yeah there could be an actual problem with this board or where I would encounter instability for any of these parts but as you were able to see there, there was nothing like I threw heavy CPU benchmarks or stress tests on this I threw at the GPU stress tests I let it idle. Nothing actually happening for this board. There's almost the newest BIOS on here also. So I I do not actually know what else I could test. Like to be in a in a scenario where where I would say there's actually a problem with any of this. Because I could leave it here for like hours upon hours to just see if it crashes at any point. But None of that would give me any indication of what could be actually wrong. So I have no reason to believe that this board is actually faulty. I think this board actually works normally and there was something with the build that the previous person was using where there was some kind of incompatibility incompa either with the CPU, with the RAM, some something with the power supply, maybe something even that he attached to either the system uh, fans or the pump header or to any RGB header or something related to the audio. I can't really tell you that because there are so many variables in this mainboard that could be different from the way that someone else tested it. But from what I can see and from what I was able to test, there's nothing wrong with it because we also use different CPUs in here. So I think I've done way more enough than to prove that this board works and does what it should do. Um, and I'm happy I could show you a little bit further in detail how I look into something that has instability issues. Like one more thing that you could actually try is to knock onto the board. This is not a joke. I had a board that had a problem where if we would knock close to it somewhere, the board would instantly shut off. And that was due to a 
cold solder joint actually on the board. So that is another test, but as, as you can see, the board is not freezing up. Everything's working fine if you knock on it. And yeah, if you're interested, this, this model number is the MS7B79. This is the revision 3.1. And what else can I say? Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something because testing a mainboard is a big part of repairing mainboards. Because even if you fix something or if you have gotten something in, you need to be able to test and recreate faults. And this is one method of doing it and testing different things, going methodically about them. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. Thank you for tuning in. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button to see more of my videos. I would love to see you in more of my videos. So I would uh, be able to teach more of what I do here. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.